this is a special moment, a historic moment because from now on the island city of Mumbai is going to become a less of an island. Yes, we are on the Mumbai Trans Harbour link which has officially been called the Atal Bihari Vajpai Shivri Navasheva Atal Setu. Long name as long as the bridge but it's Atal Setu for short. We were given exclusive access to the Atal Setu weeks before it was thrown open to the public to literally road test this amazing new marvel of engineering which the Mumbai Metropolitan Region Development Authority or MMRDA built in a record five years. So I've just left the Eastern Freeway and taken the ramp onto the Atal Setu and it's when you get off the ramp and onto the bridge you just realize the magnitude of this project Atal Setu is 21.8 kilometers long of which 16.5 kilometers is over water making this India's longest sea bridge. I tell you when you leave the chaos of Mumbai, the crazy traffic, the horrible roads and then just enter this with six lanes, super smooth and in something like this the RS e-tron GT with 646 horsepower and 830 newton meters of torque, all electric. You think you've been catapulted into the future. It's a bridge built for future generations who in time will not know what Mumbai was like without this new lifeline to the mainland. But for us right now, it's something transformational and liberating. This is going to change the face of Mumbai, it's going to change the geography of Mumbai. Getting in and out of Mumbai is going to be effortless and an utter joy. Just look at this, this empty road, it's like a dream. And honestly, this was a dream in the 1960s, hard to believe, yes, but that's when there was a vision of building a road across the harbour. In the 1960s, there were no cars, there were just Fiat's, Padminis and Ambassadors, but yet someone thought of it. But it's taken now 60 years for that initial vision, that initial thought to become a reality. The first idea of a Trans Harbour Bridge was thought of way back in 1962 by Wilbur Smith and Associates. Of course, nothing happened. And finally, it was in November 2017, after the courts cleared all environmental objections, that the project got the green light. It's really a surreal feeling just driving across the harbour. It feels like you're just floating on water over here. And uh, in fact, Google thinks you're floating on water because uh, Google still doesn't know that the Trans Harbour link exists. And yeah, that's, that's where it is. The Atal Setu has three lanes for each side plus a hard shoulder. Now it's not as wide as the Bandra Wurley Sea Link, but MMRDA has calculated that it's good enough for a projected increase volume of traffic up to 2040. The first thing you'll notice as the Trans Harbour Link isn't flat and straight. In fact, it's got a lot of character. It's got some interesting sweeping curves. It's got elevation changes. You've got these inclines and declines. And there's a reason for all of this. The Atal Setu has to steer past some very sensitive areas. On the Siuri side, it had to keep a safe distance from the eco-sensitive mangroves, which is dotted with pink migratory flamingos. Then on the left, 
the bridge had to veer away from the sensitive installations like the oil refineries and BARC. And on the right, it had to keep a distance of at least one kilometer from the World Heritage Site of Elephanta Island. And if that's not enough, it had to dodge undersea fuel pipelines and yet have enough height at certain points for big ships to pass through. That's why the bridge is taller in some sections. And it's really to dodge all these sensitive areas and obstacles that has defined Atal Setu's interesting contours and geometry. The first four kilometers have noise barriers to minimize disturbance to Siri residents. Then you have view barriers as you pass the high security Baba Atomic Research Center and they do its job well because you just can't see it. And if you're wondering why this huge bridge doesn't have the magnificent looking cable state construction of the Bandra Worley Sea Link, it's to avoid disturbing the flight path of the flamingos. That's why the Atal Setu has no tall structures on it and at its highest point is just 25 meters tall. So the Trans Harbour Sea Link may not be the most glamorous bridge, but it's technically very advanced and built with orthotropic steel decks, which is a Japanese technology which lets you have very long spans that interconnect. As you can see, I've got the bridge all to myself, so it's really tempting in this RS e-tron GT, which is capable of 250 plus kph, but I think I'm going to be good and stick to the speed limit, which is 100 k's. Cruise control works best here. So we've come to the first Ulwe interchange, which is around 17 k's. So back on land after the crossing the harbor, but the bridge still goes on and on. There are three massive interchanges, one at the start in Suri, one in Ulwe as you hit Navi Mumbai, and finally at Chirle. So we've reached the first toll in just 13 minutes, 19.6 k's in 13 minutes, it's, it's just crazy, it's just unbelievable how quickly you can get across the harbour. A one-way toll is 250 rupees and 375 for a return. Of course, the massive toll plaza with eight lanes each way has fast tag payment. But MMRDA has taken it a step further with cameras that read your number plate and automatically deduct toll from the linked bank accounts of the vehicle owners. So from the Eastern Freeway to the end of the Atal Setu, the Mumbai Trans Harbour Link, just 15 minutes to cover 22 kilometers. That is unbelievable. But to make this drive possible in 15 minutes, it took five years of hard work, 18,000 crores and thousands of people toiling to make the dream come true. Let's listen to that story. Now this is an amazing project. It's a absolutely novel project. The game-changing potentials of this project are just stupendous, mind-blowing. This connects Mumbai skyline, that is on that side, to the Navi Mumbai skyline, which is on the other side. And a long dream of Mumbai, that Mumbai and Navi Mumbai should be connected, is now, will now be fulfilled once this uh, bridge is dedicated to the nation on the 12th in the hands of the Honorable Prime Minister of India. I'm happy to tell everybody that the top State of art technologies have been used. Technologies which have never been used in this country. And despite using technologies for the first time, the finish is out here for everybody to see. Getting all the clearances is also a huge uh, task. And uh, during construction, we had to be very, very careful that we do not disturb the aquatic life, the marine life, the flamingos, flora and fauna of that area. And I'm happy to note here that we have been successful in building this bridge in a very, very economically friend, uh, environment friendly and in a very, very sustainable way. I would appeal to all our users that please stay within the speed limit. This bridge is all about connectivity, this bridge is all about opportunity and the opportunity has to be used well so that we follow the road rules, we stay on the uh, you know, carriageway that we are in, we do not cross the lines, we do not over speed, we do not overtake unnecessarily. So those are the things which all of us will have to keep in mind. Drive safely, drive responsibly and enjoy the bridge. But the MMRDA hasn't stopped its great work and in the next phase this road will be further extended. Let's have a quick look.
So as you can see here, the road has abruptly ended, but it's not the end of the road. There's going to be an additional section which will connect with the expressway, making it even shorter to get there. Pune, Lonavla, Alibagh, Bhableshwar, it's all become so much closer. Time to make an about turn back to Mumbai. But on the way back, let me show you some interesting details. Well, since the bridge isn't opened yet, I'm going to take advantage of that and stop here and show you some things. Now, I wouldn't advise stopping here otherwise because there are cameras and they are designed to detect any car that has stopped and relay it to the control room. And these surveillance cameras are just 300 meters apart, so there's no escaping your every move on the Atal Setu. And you'll think twice about speeding too because there are four speed cameras for each side. So coming back, you get a brilliant view of Elephanta Islands. I've never seen it from this side at all, naturally. And really, it is a, it's a superb view. The only problem is the smog, which spoils it a bit. And so does this high railing, which acts as a strong barrier. And this solid railing is designed to take an impact of 100 kilometers an hour from a truck. So not much chance of anything going over. On such a long bridge, safety is super important, especially if there's an accident or a breakdown. And there's one more thing I want to show you. There are these massive laybys over here for emergency services. Coming back to Suri, I'm getting a view of the Mumbai skyline I've never seen before. So we are back at the Shuri end of the Trans Harbour Link and it's just now that the magnitude of this mega infrastructure project is beginning to sink in. I mean, just look at it, it's absolutely world class. You've got these multiple interchanges which just makes getting on and off it absolutely easy. And the fact that I can go to Navi Mumbai and back in under an hour, it just shatters your concept of time and distance. Clearly, Mumbai will never be the same again. <music>